Well, you may know that a couple of days ago it was uh, Stop Smoking Day. I wonder how many people paid attention to that. Now, next week it is National Apprenticeship Week, and right now we are in World Awareness Week, and I've had to check the pronunciation here. I'm reliably told it's glaucoma. Uh, Dr. Rob Hogan is with me. Rob, good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, is glaucoma right then? Is, is that how you say it? Glaucoma? That's fine. Yeah. Um, this is so much your field, you are, you are an expert in it. Just to, to make it as simple as you can, what exactly is it? Glaucoma is a um, number of conditions that have a common end, a uh, slightly varying start, but that end point is a loss of vision. And that loss of vision starts from the outside, what we call the periphery, and gradually, silently, quietly, insidiously contracts until you can end up with you know, looking down a smarty tube kind of thing. Mm. And that can be, depending on the type of glaucoma and your level of inheritance, that can be relatively fast or it can be fairly slow. So is it reasonable to assume that as, as this vision is going like this, uh, that you are aware of it? Uh, no, the, the, there is one particular type of glaucoma that, that does, does have symptoms, and um, we can talk about that maybe, but the vast majority of glaucoma is symptomless. In fact, by the time you personally become aware that you have got any vision loss, you will have lost over 50% of your sight. Wow. Irreversibly. So that is quite a serious problem. It's the second largest cause of vision loss in the world yeah. after cataract. I'm struggling to work out if you've lost 50% of your vision, how you don't realise you have. Well, the central part of your vision is protected in a sense. Mm. You, you, we, we use our central vision to see clearly, detail, driving, what, whatever. Our peripheral vision is exactly that, peripheral. Mm. Um, and if it gradually collapses down, with having two eyes, a patch missing in your vision this side might be helped by a similar area in the vision on this side not missing. But it's only when the two patches coincide that you notice yourself, oh, as I move around, I've got a blind spot in my vision. By then, you'll have lost a substantial part of your vision. Seems extraordinary, and, and, and you say it's irreversible. There's, there's nothing that can be done. Well, we can do things to prevent it once it's been detected or once the risk, your risk has been detected. But if you've lost that sight currently, there is no, there, there is no way of getting that vision back. And once you get to that stage where you've lost this 50%, will you then go blind? Is that the next stage? Um, well, by then, it's, it, it's seriously down, down the road of blindness. The simplest and, and the take-home message in all of this is to have an eye examination on a regular basis so that we can get a baseline measure of where you are. And every couple of years, come along, have your eyes checked over. Uh, and this is, one of, this is the only way, really, it can be de detected. And um, the, the typical ways of de uh, measuring this are the, measuring the pressure inside the eye, mm. uh, measuring the sensitivity of the retina. This is a test many people will have had, little white lights and counting them and seeing them. And when the optometrist looks inside your eye at the retina, at the back of the eye, and the optic nerve particularly, which then takes the messages from the eye to the brain, it's where it joins at the back of the eye, that's where the damage occurs. I know when I've had eye tests and you sit there and they do this little puff thing and they say, yeah, are you OK? And you're sitting there like <laughs> this, aren't you, waiting for it, and you blink and say, no, we're going to do it again. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it's not painful, but it's sort of quite uncomfortable in a funny sort of way. What's that actually showing them then? What's it doing? That, that's a very, very clever technique. Previously, and, and, and still in hospitals, you'll have a, a technique where they'll put some drops in your eye, anaesthetic drops and, and a yellow dye, and they put a probe on your eye so it physically touches the eye, which, isn't, which is fine if the, once the anaesthetics work. That can be a little more concerning than a puff of air every, uh, you usually take three or four puffs over a, a minute and average the score out. What that actually is doing is putting enough air at your eye to make the front surface flat. So it acts like a mirror, right. and then there's a detector in the, in the machine as well that sends a, a, an infrared light, and it's picked up, and once the, the eye's been flattened by the puff of air, it knows exactly mm. that's the time to stop, and it works out the pressure inside the eye. So that, that's Very a fail-safe, then, that, that that will tell an optician? Yes. We can, give yeah. you, we, we, we can re take a measurement straight away, mm. and by taking three or four measurements and taking an average over that time, it tends to cut out the variability that we have. And the other one is, of course, as you say, when you, you're peering through there and, you know, you're counting the little white flashes that come up. Is that peripheral vision there? Is that what that's doing? Exactly. We use our peripheral vision particularly to notice things um, happening around us and, and, we'll, and then we'll direct our central vision to look at them. 
Uh, so, and that peripheral vision is very important at night because the central part of your vision tends not to work at night when the light levels drop, but your periphery is important. So one thing that a lot of people don't realise is that if you've lost your peripheral vision, you effectively end up becoming blind at night. So, so uh, and you know, one can only speak from places you've been to. Does every optician offer this this service for, to people all the time? Because it, it sounds as though they should. Yeah, yes, they should. They should. Um, th the professional body, pr uh, the College of Optometrists, have uh, professional guidance on on all of these matters, and it's recommended that the the, uh, the pressure examination, the retinal test is, in, is a, it has to be performed, um, and the visual field test is always performed. Uh, usually on people over the age of 30 or 40, or specifically if you have a family history. I was just going to say to you uh, fairly briefly as we're coming up to the break, is it uh, an age-related thing usually? There are several risk factors. Mm. Age is one of the, the largest. Um, the population with glaucoma is about 2% over, over 40, and that goes up to 5 maybe 6% over, over 80. Mm. We were talking beforehand about... Um, being able to predict it because you said you know you turn up and you think you're okay and suddenly they tell you this is there no way at all that anybody these days can actually say you are a potential you are at risk well, it's, it's an interesting question because in October in the American Journal of Ophthalmology there's a paper published which um, demonstrated that and they followed people over a long period of time mm. and they found that about 20% of glaucomas can be predicted eight years previously using wow. a technique that measures the thickness of the nerve fiber layer, the bits where mm. the nerves disappear down the optic nerve to the brain. And, um, and so that is amazing because it opens a window of, of pre-treatment as, as a prevention. I was just going to say, because you said to me in the first part of our interview, that you know, once you've got it, you've got it, it's irreversible. Presumably, if they can tell you eight years beforehand, they, were, they are currently working on, on some sort of treatment. Yes, yes, the tr there are various treatments, drops, um, various types of surgery or l laser um, work as well, which, which will prevent it getting worse. But to be able to prevent it occurring in the first place by recognising someone who's at risk, that's astounding. Is it uh, an hereditary thing at all? Th there is a strong hereditary link. It's not the only risk factor, um, but if you have um, a, a, f a, gener a first or even, even second generation family member who's got it, your risk goes up by four mm. of, of catching glaucoma. And I notice you mentioned diabetes as well. Yes, diabetes um, is a risk, um, high myopia is a risk, um, and as I mentioned previously, you know, race uh, as well. Mm. That was something I was just going to come on to because you said that there, there are some, some races and some ethnicities that are particularly vulnerable to this. Indeed, um, the most predominant one would be the Afri African Caribbean. Um, who have a very strong, a much stronger inheritance link with glaucoma. And it occurs earlier and it is much, much more fierce. And um, so if you are in, in that category with a family history, you must have your eyes examined much earlier than we, we typically used to say 40. I would recommend that down to 30 now, definitely. And do we know why they are particularly at risk? I think it's just that inheritance link. There's a lot of research going on to show that. There is also um, Far East Japanese um, uh, uh, have a, there's a type of glaucoma where the pressure inside the eye isn't particularly high, but that causes glaucoma. Mm. There are others that uh, contract this type of, where it's called angle closure. This is the one I mentioned earlier that has the, is the only one with a symptom. That's a massive pain in the eye. Is it something that we've suddenly become more aware of? I mean, I know that globally we're more aware of an awful lot of things because we tap into a search engine and there it all is. Um, but is there any reason, I mean, are we actually more aware of it and, and are we finding more cases simply because of that? I think the <coughs> research shows that 70% of the population don't realise there, there is a, an inherent link with glaucoma. We, we use our eyes significantly, much more than we ever did. 75% um, of all the information we take in from the world around us, of all our five senses, comes through our eyes. So that's significant. This is the seventh year of, Nash of uh, World Glaucoma Awareness Week. Um, we have um, a, a similar thing in each individual country. Mm. Um, the International Glaucoma Association, which is a charity of Vision Express, um, it is, is a, a, an area where you can get a, lo a lot of information from. And it, I think it's just, we, 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 we're, we're, we're always being told to take care of ourselves. Well-being is, mm. is, is the, uh, the motto at the moment. 
And are some people thinking, well, I know there's a history of I've got diabetes, etc. They're actually afraid to go because they know that there is no cure for them. I think the importance is to realise, what would you rather, um, go blind um, or, or have, for, for, the, for the cost of 4p a day perhaps, in terms of the, uh, if you have an eye examination every couple of years, works out at about 4p a day, to have that peace of mind. The, the only trigger really is often if you have a member of the family who's got it, because it's not an issue just for the sufferer, it will be an issue for the carers. You've got a van called a vision van, haven't you, that's touring the country and it's in Birmingham today. Uh, I know this because one of our reporters has gone to do some filming there. Is this sort of like a drop-in, look, come and have a test and, and let's, let's check you out? Yes, we've been, we've been um, sending a vision van, which is a mobile consulting room, really well equipped with, with uh, technology, including the OCT that was used in that eight-year study I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, to, to increase awareness, to increase access, and to let people who, ha who may have a, a concern over the, the cost of eye care to go along and have a free eye examination. You can download a voucher um, from visionexpress.com, and that's valid until the 18th of April to take to any Vision Express practice and have your eyes examined for free. In terms of, of, of the bigger picture, the global picture, where does the UK stand in, in, in the, the, the world where, where it's a particular problem? Um, glaucoma is the second largest cause of sight loss in the world after cataract. And, mm. and, and of all the sight reasons for the cause of sight loss in the world, 50% of it is preventable by a simple eye examination. We are no worse or less um, nation, uh, internationally in terms of the incidence of glaucoma, <coughs> but we are a very well-developed race, excellent health service in, in, in an acute um, phase, so really take the advice and have your eyes examined on a regular basis. Is there a greater incidence of, of glaucoma now or is it just that, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're, we're all so much more aware of so many things? Absolutely. I mean, programmes like this, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, that, that, would, that would not have been the case whatsoever. And people are becoming more um, advised to take care of, of, of the health and vision, as I mentioned earlier about the, the importance of sight, of all your senses, if you had to, which is the one you'd like to lose least if you were forced? Mm. And that answers that question. And I'm just thinking, you, with the mention of diabetes, how much could uh, diet be a, a play any sort of factor in all of this? It's a very good question. There's, there's quite a significant amount of research going on. Mm. If you, deep, if you delve into the main causes of glaucoma, people talk about the pressure, which is why we take that measurement. But the, ostensibly, the reason for the sight loss is a, um, a, a reduction in the amount of blood being supplied to the nerves in the eye. Diabetes is an issue of supply of blood at the end of the day because uh, vessels leak. Um, glauco uh, you, you have gl uh, glucose in, in these cells that prevent the cells working properly. It's getting uh, oxygen and, and blood nutrients to the parts of the eye um, to keep it alive. Okay. Right, so there you are. Just nip along if you uh, can't get to that vision van in Birmingham, just go and see your optician. It's well worth it. Dr. Rob Hogan, thank you for being with us this morning. I'll see you again after the break.